Welcome back to the tea of the day. Okay, as we are dealing with crazy coronavirus season right now, jazz hands. I don't know why I'm doing this. It just felt like it. As we're dealing with crazy coronavirus, as we are dealing with this madness right now, I want to talk about tea that helps with flu symptoms. Now, obviously, we're going to put a precursor on this because. The tea itself can't stop the coronavirus. Nothing along these lines can. Only a proper uh, antidote for this actual virus is going to do that. But what a tea can do, and this is the case for pretty much any tea, is it can help boost your immune system in a variety of ways. Now, um, this one is specifically uh, set to deal more with uh, flu type symptoms and uh, stuff along those lines. So things along the lines from sore throat, um, respiratory and chest problems, and uh, other cold like symptoms as well, some, some head uh, problems. Uh, but these are the main monsters that you want to get in your system when you're dealing with these kind of things, or mostly um, tea is more about the long game. It's uh, not like I can suddenly go, okay, okay, I had some tea, everything's good, I'm healthy, yep, no no virus here. <laughs> That's not how it works, okay? You can't just suddenly go, oh, I've got a glass of tea, I'm protected. Um, tea is a cumulative effect, tea is a long time burst, uh, booster. Uh, according to studies and whatnot, you generally have to have the tea every day, consistently, you know, for months to really get the uh, full benefits out of it. So yes, it's going to help you. Yes, um, these things are good for you, but it's on a long-term game, okay, people? You can't just suddenly go, yes, I had the one glass and everything's great. That's not how the tea works. Okay, let's get into the primary uh, types of herbs and such that are good for these flu-like symptoms. Now, the main ones that you probably have heard about are things like ginger, peppermint, lemon, um, cayenne pepper, actually, for cold symptoms is helpful as well. Um, honey, of course, is good for these things. Echinacea, most everybody knows about echinacea with cold symptoms. I just spilled the tea on myself! Ah! Okay, I gotta drink some of this tea before I keep talking and shaking my hand about. <laughs> That's done! I'm gonna go hands-free for a second. Welcome back to the tea! Okay. Let's talk about my tea first. Uh, what I have here is I have actually, I've put some cayenne here, I've put some ginger, I've got some peppermint, all of these things are good for the flus, but I've also added a couple of fun things as well, just from my fresh herb garden. So I've got some sage, some thyme in there, and uh, also threw in some nettle, which is also good for these various flu type symptoms, uh, various good, good for various stomach problems as well as what it's good for a lot, and fennel, which is also good for um, some things along the lines of uh, throat problems and for uh, stomach problems as well. Now a few others that you might not have heard of, um, one of which you probably have because I did a video on it recently, turmeric is a monster um, health uh, booster. Now it's an anti-inflammatory and I've heard some things say that you're not supposed to go with the heavy anti-inflammatories such as having ibuprofen or stuff with this coronavirus. You're supposed to stick with paracetamol or something more along those lines that doesn't have uh, quite as much of an anti-inflammatory in it if you're having an aspirin or something along those lines. Um, but for these things, like I said, they're much lighter in that terms. It's not like you're suddenly having 500 milligrams of anti-inflammatories in one cup of tea, okay? <laughs> like I said, that's not how it works, it's the long game. So you're perfectly okay if you're having this stuff, I think. Um, but a couple other little ones that are uh, lesser known as far as good fighting abilities. Hibiscus, um, which I wouldn't necessarily want to put in this because it's a fruity tea, very fruity. Um, good for a lot of people. Um, I'm not a huge fan of having it by itself. I like other things with it. I don't think it would go with good with this tea particularly. But I'm probably gonna have to try it now, damn it! Don't do it, man! Don't try it! Man, I'm gonna have to. It sounds so cool! It's not worth it, man. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Elderflower, or elderberry, is uh, a big one uh, that I've heard about. Uh, um, and is really good for various cold and flu symptoms. Licorice root, and I already mentioned the nettle, but these are the major ones on uh, my list for the uh, top 10, essentially. Um, of course, 
at the basic root, you also have green tea and white tea are the main primary types of tea that are good when you're trying to boost the immune system and uh, have various things that help uh, raise your antioxidants, your flavonoids, all those wonderful things that tea helps with. So I think I'm going to stop there. I've covered quite a few things. I've spilled enough tea today. Um, but yeah, that just gives you a basic round. If there's any majors that you think um, actually should be covered in this as well, feel free to let me know in the comment section below about any other uh, major herbs that you think would uh, fit well with this too. I know there are some others, but these are the primary ones I know about. Lemon balm's out there as well. Hey, you know, there are some others. So yeah, feel free to comment about uh, any uh, questions you might have or any other herbs you'd like to mention regarding this topic. Uh, but until next time, y'all have a great tea of the day. <laughs>